Hello and welcome to all our listeners out there. My name is Don Pacella. And I'm Angela Pacella. And this is Welcome to Livingston, our podcast that talks all about Livingston County, uh, everything that's going on in the county where we highlight local businesses and just uh, chat with them for a half hour or so and talk to them about what they have going on in the community. Um, and I wanted to introduce our guest today really quickly before we get started. Our guest today is Christina Kifkakis, um, and she is a local photographer. So thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, so you own Christina Maria Photo then? I do. Yes, I've owned that since 2009. But when I first started my business, it was under a different name. And so some people might recognize some of my earlier work under Two Angels Photography. Um, I still own that business name in Michigan, but I do business as Christina Maria Photo. Great. Wonderful. Great. Yeah, so, um, you know, we, we wanted to have you in today, you know, not only because I find photography so interesting and it's, you know, it's one of those things that a lot of people don't think about till they need it and then they, they don't know where to look for it. Mm -hmm. and, and they have absolutely no idea where to start. And a lot of people, their uh, intro into it is, oh my gosh, I need senior photos, and where do I get started with right, that? Right, so, right. So I guess we could start off just a little bit and, you know, how long you've been in photography a little bit, you know, how you got started into it, and we can segue from there. Okay. Um, well, honestly, I've always been the family photographer. Um, when I was a child... I always was taking my parents' camera. My grandparents had the old-fashioned ones with the flash cubes on top that you'd have to change out, which I just love. <laughs> um, believe it or not, it's hard to find those now. Um, I wanted to find some to put on display in my studio, and it's really difficult to find those flash cubes. But um, So I've, I've always been the person that's been trying to capture our family over the years, and I think that the love of it comes from my parents and their photo albums. Um, my parents always had photo albums in the house full of old black and white photos from when my grandparents were young. And my mom has these really wonderful, very old, the stiff posed portraits right. where a family would pose together. Maybe it was before they, they came to the States. Or, you know, in our case, it was before people went, um, you know, left Italy and came to the United States. So we have these wonderful portraits, and I think that's what inspired my love of pictures and in the visual arts. Um, and then, of course, when I had my children, it became more of a hobby because I had these little objects that I could practice on for lack of a better way to you know the dogs move pretty quickly but a baby can sit there for a little bit of time right, right. and so um once I had our family that's when it really became something that went beyond just a hobby it was something that I thought I could do nice that's great now what do you like best about it and what types of shoots do you do so I'm a portrait photographer primarily. I do offer other types of photography, but for the most part, I shoot portraits. And so I work with a lot of families in Livingston County um, and beyond, um, maternity, newborn families, senior portraits. Um, I think a lot of people think about photography when they're reaching a milestone in their life, whether it's when they're getting married or they're having a baby, they're growing their family, maybe they want to document special times, like if they're religious and they have certain sacraments or things that they want to document over the years. So those are usually the times that people will reach out to a photographer. Um, for me, I think the most important thing is having a visual documentation of your family. Um, if you think about it, photography is a visual history. And when you look back at our family's history over the years, what do uh -huh. we go towards, right? We go towards our photos. And so I think for me, it's all about documenting a family's history. And it, it's so amazing to me when I get to see families and I hadn't seen them in maybe a year or two. And they've changed so much or they've added, you know, another baby, especially with the pandemic. Right. You know, there's been some people I haven't seen for a while and then they surprised me with another baby <laughs> and so I was like oh wow they weren't here last time yeah. so that was really fun to see 
So, right. well, you know, one of the things I wanted to ask you about is technology because you mentioned the old cameras with the flash oh, yeah. tubes and such. And I remember growing up, my grandparents had the what are those ones? They're the plastic and they were on the reel. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, the, well, you would have slides. to wind them. Yeah, you'd yeah, have to you'd wind look them at yourself. Hun- hundreds of slides mm-hmm. that they would flip through and such. But with iPhones and with the oh, uh, digital amazing. and such, um, you know, how has that really affected it? Because I think for a while there, people thought, hey, I can do it all with my digital camera. Right. But, I mean, that's not the same. Yeah. Well, there's definitely an advantage to having an iPhone or your, you know, your smartphone is the camera. And that's something that I take advantage of when we're traveling. Because I know that for me, if we're going on a trip somewhere and I don't want to have to bring my big camera, that's what I call it, is my big camera and my big bag, then I can use my iPhone and take some pretty decent pictures. But if I'm going to be using those photos to, say, decorate my home or to, you know, maybe make a book or something like that, you have to be really careful with what you use on your phone and check your settings of your camera. The cameras now on phones are amazing, but you have to make sure they're set right because it's like anything else when it comes to photography. The auto settings aren't always the best. A lot of times the phones uh, will have an optimization feature for your photos so that you can get more photos on your phone storage, and that doesn't necessarily translate well to print. So it looks Uh great on a small screen or maybe even as big as like an 8x10 or a sheet of paper. But when you want to go big wall format or, you know, wall art, then you're going to lose a lot of the detail or any of the information because you just can't stretch a photo that big. So it starts really starts with making sure you have the right setting. 100%. And that that goes all the way back to the way I do it, right? So like I use a digital camera as well. But the pro cameras that I use are very specific in terms of resolution, pixels per inch. Um, The camera I use now is a mirrorless camera, which means that it has a greater ability to work in low light pretty fast as well, focus-wise very fast. Um, And then, of course, the lenses too. And you can get things like that for your camera, for your phone, but it's just not going to be the same in terms of large prints or decorative art. Right, because right. people take all these digital photos and they they look great, but they don't think about the fact of, well, what happens if I want to download this and print it yeah, off? Yeah, and the other thing that people um, are not used to is they have this phone with them all the time, and so it's handy, right? Mm-hmm. And when you don't have internet access or you don't have Wi-Fi or maybe, you're, you know, your phone's updating, who knows, right? But what are we going to be doing when those are obsolete? So I always say to people, even if you're – just taking snapshots with your phone. Make sure you print them. There's a lot of different services that you can use where you can send them once a month and make a book out of them. You could upload them directly to a photo printing service. There's like mpix.com and right. you know a few others. Shutterfly has the yeah. service too. And I always recommend that people do that because when you go back in time, you're not going to be looking for old devices. At, at some point, electronics become obsolete. Think about when we were kids. And what we used in the cameras ba- from back then. Right. Oh my gosh! And the slides. Polaroid, at least I mean, would have it you know, we had slideshows, right? When right. we were kids, so, you know, like a family event, and we'd bring out the big projector and do the slideshow. We don't do that anymore. So technology definitely has a, a, plays a major role. But that's why I always say, print your pictures. Right. Yeah. Right. So you know, I was looking at your website a little bit, and I love those. And Getty's type of photos that oh, you yeah, have on those there are and my such. Favorites. <laughs> so when someone is thinking about that and they're mm-hmm. like, okay, we're having a baby. Yeah. You know, uh, at what point should they be getting in contact with you and how often should people really be thinking about, you know, at what age are those type of photos and, yeah. you know, having that discussion with someone? Yeah. yeah. If you're looking at the ones that are the real traditional newborn, the posed newborns, which are probably my favorite to do, who doesn't love? snuggling a baby for their job, right? (laughs) Um, So if you're looking at those types of portraits, those are usually people who have reserved their session with me while they're pregnant. So they reach out to me when they're expecting, and we schedule their session based on their due date. And the reason we do that is so that way I can kind of plan my calendar and make sure that I'm not overwhelmed in a certain time frame. You know, um, when the pandemic first hit, there was definitely a big boom of babies, right? Mm-hmm. When everybody had to stay home. So last year about this time is when we had a lot of babies coming. 
Um, and so you, I'll reserve their sessions by their due date. And then when the baby comes, I'm like on their phone tree, if you will. So like when they notify people, I'm usually one of the people that gets notified within the first few days that baby's arrived. And then we schedule the session. Most newborns, I like to have their feeding pattern established, if you will. So whether they're bottle feeding or breastfeeding, I like them to be established on that. And so that's usually around like five days or so. I like to give parents a, a chance. Um, I can get babies to sleep as old as three months old, but usually for the cute little curled up poses, it's best if they're probably under three weeks old. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And it sort of depends too on whether or not they go full term or not. I know that sounds strange, but the longer a baby is in utero, the bigger they get and they're not as able to fold up as small. I know that oh sounds weird, but um, when when they're bigger, um, they don't, they stretch out more, you know, once they're out of the womb. So like it, the younger they are, the the easier it is to get them into the cutesy little folded up positions. Got you. Very fun. Now, what about senior photos? Now, how do you make those special for those students? So senior pictures are probably some of my favorite. And I have to admit, part of that is because I don't have to dance around like a crazy person to get them to smile. <laughs> you know, they know when to smile. <laughs> um, and technology has actually played a big role on that, right? Because a lot of them know what they like or they look up. Uh, they're good you know, side. Or they're yeah, they're good side. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they're selfie side. And in fact, I'll say to people, you know, do you have a side you prefer? And they say, I don't know. And I say, well, when you take a selfie, which way do you do it? And then they realize, oh, wow, I didn't know that I had a favorite side. But for senior pictures, my favorite thing is to incorporate what they love, right? So some people love sports. And so we'll include their sports um, equipment or um, maybe their jerseys. If they have a hobby outside of sports, like I've done quite a few kids that are were part of the robotics team for Brighton. And mm -hmm. so they brought their robotics gear, um, you know, their swag, and then their medals that they won at their competition. Um, I've done several equestrian photo sessions for people who ride. So I really try to find out what makes that person tick and then go from there when we're planning the session. Great. Really personalize it that way. Really, but yeah. It's such a special time. It is. Life. And I, I want their individuality to be showcased. I don't want them to feel like they're just another person coming to me. I want them to feel like I'm taking the time to get to know them. And so that's why I usually recommend that they bring things that they like to do or enjoy doing so that we can incorporate that. Right. And another thing that I've seen has changed over the years is you know, we're all around the same age. When we graduated high oh, yeah. school, you went to a studio. Oh, for sure. And, and you had the photos taken. Now, all these senior photos, so many of them you've seen, they're outside, they're oh, on yeah. location. So yeah. it's it's a real big difference in terms of how far that's come. It, it's interesting because even with my own family, there's a 10-year difference between me and my next sibling. And all of his were done in studio. And then by the time I had photos, I went to somebody who had a studio, but also a um, had outdoor. Now that was different because we didn't go on location somewhere. That was all, you know, on their property. So usually studios would have a studio and they'd have setups on their property. And I have some, some places like that on my studio lot where, um, I just moved in this last year to the new place. So I'm still, you know, building up my yard to be what I like it to be. Um, but I love going on location. And that's one of the things that I love about senior pictures or even family pictures is I like to go on location to where uh, maybe a place that's important to them or special to them. So right. we could use a good example that you recently took our photos up at Michigan State. Yes. Where, which is kind of neat that we all went to school there. And I can't even believe, I'll share with the, the listeners here that um, – we didn't realize it till years after when we ran into each other that we had gone to school right at the same time. You were in the right dorm. Right at the same time. Right next door. Dorm right next door. I would yeah. pick up my box lunches from your <laughs> dorm. And yeah, such a small world. It was so funny when I saw you. It was the 4th of July parade was yeah. the first time we had reconnected. And I, I knew you were a Michigan State alum because obviously we're marching in this parade right? together. But, but you I look thought, too familiar. I was oh like, my "Gosh, I've seen her! I know how I've in the seen world her. do yeah. I know her?" And I kept thinking, "Was it from your job?" Because that was before you were a realtor. Yeah. And I thought, 
what is this? And then we realized when we talked that we lived right next door to each other and we would see each other on the trail. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. And so it was neat that, so in terms of photography, you were able to take us back to that trail um, here I in the know. fall. Beautiful. Took us right and, back, didn't it? With, oh, yeah, exactly my gosh. <laughs> Although we didn't have electric scooters and things like that. Well, you know, it's very, very different, different up there now. We definitely had to pay more attention this time to yes. the people whizzing by on the trail. It used to just be the bikes or maybe rollerblades, right? Rollerblades yeah. were right. the big thing back then. Remember that? So, But it was nice because then it had that personal touch that anybody looking at it is just going to see that it's this fall scene. But we know that yeah. it's, you know, it, that path Yeah, that if you've walked. gone to Michigan State... And you know there are certain areas where you recognize right away, right? Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's the great thing about what you do in photography and such, that it's not just the people in the picture that's important. It's yeah. where the photo's taking place. Right. A lot of people don't think about that because when you look at a photo, it's more than just the people in it. It's the scene as well. And you really have to think about that when you're doing the setup of the photo because like <clears throat> in some cases I want it to be more like artistic or like watercolor. I always describe it as a kind of like a watercolor background at that Monet impressionistic look to it. But other times you want to be able to see what's behind you and you want like, for example, for our wedding photos, my husband and I were married on campus. And so we wanted to make sure that there were certain landmarks that we captured and right. we didn't want it to, you know, be fuzzy. Yeah. yeah, we wanted to be able to make it out in the background, and that all comes from the settings and the camera that you took, you know, th that you choose. So, got you, got you. That all makes sense. So, I know one of the other things that we wanted to ask about is how often should families or people be thinking about taking photos? Because you know, sometimes you you see the photos on the wall, and it's like, oh, look, a a decade yeah. took place in between. I think it's <laughs> a lot different now that they're the photos are digital because it allows people to get the photos taken more often. Um, I know that when I was young, we maybe did it every three or four years for the church directory, for example, you know, and I think that's when people would update their photos. I think that at a very minimum, if you have a family that's reaching certain milestones, you should update your family pictures at that time. So whether a person is um, graduating, I always recommend that if you haven't had a family photo in a while and your child's graduating and you're coming to me for senior pictures, then we should also do a family picture at that time. A lot of times people hadn't had photos done in, you know, 10 years or something like that, yeah. right? Like you said. So I always do a yearly photo, but obviously I'm a photographer mm -hmm. and my house is decorated with my photos of my children and things like that. So obviously my preferences are not the same as others. If you can, I think a yearly photo is great because then you document. It's kind of like the school photo thing, right? right? Like people ask me all the time, do you buy the school photos? Well, yes, of course I do because that is going to document the change. And even the change from the fall to the spring is so big with the kit, right? Yeah, so I think, they Yeah, I think for me, I've got to have that school photo where you can see the change from year to year and so if you can I think recommending at least a year every year if you can and if not definitely every two if you can right I mean you can do mini sessions now with photographers that are a little bit less involved time-wise yeah. and generally have a theme or um, you know are quicker for people to do so I know you still have to plan on outfits and things like that but at <laughs> least you don't have to plan on quite so long of um, a session so if you're busy with sports or the whatnot then you can fit it in your schedule got you got you those are great advantages for those mini sessions a lot of people think may not be aware of that and I, I think mini sessions are a really great offering that we have for people because it allows us to set aside a day so that we can plan for our own family's activities mini sessions usually take place different times of year you know in Michigan we're lucky right mm -hmm. especially in Livingston County because Livingston County is such a beautiful location. We've got, you know, a great recreation area. It's one of the top recreation areas in the state. And then we've got the metro parks. We've got local parks. So I think that uh, mini sessions are a great way to document the changes of the seasons in Michigan and also, you know, be able to get in with your family and, and get, you know, a lot of people do it for holiday photo time um, for photo cards. That's really right. popular now. So I love to see those myself in the mail, you know, when you see right. people and you're like, wow, look at how different they look. 
Wow. Yeah, now that we're in December, we'll be seeing a lot more of oh, those Oh, yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now that it's officially December, right? Right. And mm-hmm. one of the things you mentioned is you mentioned outfits and such. Do you work with people to try to help them? Because I know oh, yeah. some people are better at that than others. Yeah. I think a lot of people, when they first start thinking about photos, the fact that they are thinking about it is great. But the thing that gets them stuck a lot of times is the outfit choices, right? And so it depends on the family, of course. I feel personally having a family of majority boys that it's easier to dress boys and men for photos than it is for girls. Um, And I say that only because, especially like for us, now I have a young daughter. And so we kind of go around her outfit (laughs) first. I could say that. And I think it's because, you know, for me, at least, if the kids are happy, then the family will be happy for photos. So generally, you know, I say to parents, if you have somebody who has something they really want to wear, work with them, and then you can kind of coordinate around it. Um, a lot of times people ask about matching outfits. Yeah. And if that's what you want to do, that's great. I know that that was a big trend in the 90s was to do matching outfits like a lot of people all in white shirts and denim or, you know, matching patterns. I say coordination is best, small patterns, very little logos, if you can help it, um, coordinating colors, and really just wearing something that makes you feel good. You don't want to dress for photos in something you wouldn't normally wear because then it's going to show in your body language and your confidence. So you want to make sure that when you're having a picture taken, you're wearing something that you would normally wear or that you feel confident in. That's the number one piece of advice I can give you. Got you, got you. And you know, it's really interesting because me and Angela both being in real estate and such, I didn't even think about it till in this conversation that walking through houses a lot of time, we see these portraits on the wall. Oh yeah. And it's so interesting because the, what they're wearing a lot of times lets you know what decade the picture was taken in? Hundred percent. You know that that that's so dated. Hairstyles Hairstyle. and Hairstyle, outfits, yeah. I think for sure. Yep. And that's why I tend to recommend classic pieces of clothing, things that are generally in style throughout the years. Um, you know, like the big butterfly, widespread oh, yeah. collars. Mm-hmm. Dead giveaway seventies, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my my brother's senior picture has like corduroy jacket too so i mean again you can look at it and date it right from looking at it right right so if you go with classic pieces like you know sweaters suits dresses layers you know yeah yeah really stands out that way yeah yeah. something that's not really too trendy because you'll be able to tell for sure because otherwise isn't there like a a jokey thing with photos or something of like well you definitely don't want your family your picture yeah to f- like my best friend actually gifted me the book awkward family photos there we go that's and what I was you thinking definitely of. don't <laughs> want to have your picture show up in there if you can help it right now if you do you have any funny stories of people that like they're they're walking in and they have the outfits you're like this is going to be an awkward family photo oh or <laughs> let's see well i do have um I have a photo up in the studio, and it was one that I won an award with um, through uh, one of the print labs that I use. They had a a competition, and it was, you know, humorous category. And I was doing photos for this little girl. She was only two, I think, at the time, and she was in pageants. So the mom had brought a whole bunch of different pageant outfits, and we were doing, you know, her kind of headshots and publicity shots for entering the pageants. And we switched her back to her regular clothes and she was being really sassy with me and just, you know, kind of flirty and stuff. And I thought, I'm going to get some pictures of her in her regular clothes. And she did this kissy face where she like made kind of like, I, I don't want to say duck lips because they're not really duck lips, but it was like a kissy face. And so I snapped this photo and it happened to win this prize. And so it's sometimes the unexpected moments that turn out to be the best ones um, in a session, because the mom, of course, was planning on getting all these other photos of her in her <laughs> formal pageant wear, and then which ones did she happen to like the most when she was being sassy with me and, and you know, flirty? The personality really right. shows yeah, through, and for it's sure. amazing to think just on a photograph that you could really well, see. Well, yeah. even when you did the photo session with us, you know, one of the pictures I like is when um, 
our oldest son Harrison picked up Evie. Yes. And they were just kind of joking and playing oh, yeah. and you took a shot of that. I did. That's and cute. um it was really cute because I took I don't know if you noticed but there's one where they're not looking. Yes. And then there's one where they noticed I was taking the picture and so they kind of posed for me. And I just thought it was so cute because it was such a genuine interaction between the two of them. Yeah. It, I didn't ask them to do it. And it was just a brother showing love to his sister. Yeah. And they get along you know? so well. That yeah. Was just and, the, and that's the thing. kind of thing. And sometimes, you know, the best shots from a family session are, are sometimes when you're not, not trying. Yeah, yeah. You're not posing. And sometimes the funniest ones are when you catch that sibling interaction. <laughs> that's maybe not the best. Right. So some of my favorite photos that I've taken have been when the kids were having a temper tantrum when they were little. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I think I definitely, I mean, one of the, one of my most favorite pictures I've ever taken is, um, was during a Santa session. And of course, everybody jokes about how kids don't like Santa, but this particular picture was a baby and the toddler and neither one wow. likes Santa <laughs> and Santa kind of gave me this look like, uh Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> and so that was their holiday card that year. And it was like, you know, oh my goodness. yeah, we, we, it was, it was very cute. It was very cute. How fun. Oh, that's great. Now in terms of, I know we talked about clothes and what things you should wear. Is there any things like make sure that you absolutely do not do or do not wear like in terms of oh gosh stuff. well I think for women I definitely would not recommend getting a different hairstyle or changing your hairstyle Good right point. before your photos I definitely think that you should style your hair how you normally like it or you do it yourself if you can if you don't feel comfortable by all means go somewhere but don't try out a new hairstyle right before your pictures um, a lot of times guys will go get a haircut um, either the day before or the day of pictures. Sometimes that works. It depends on the hairstyle. I definitely recommend giving it a few days, though, beforehand if you can. And as far as what not to wear, definitely don't don't wear big logos or brands unless you are trying to be a brand rep for them. I mean, honestly, we're not advertising. I know my own family, you know, we all have those snapshots in our phone where we're wearing the matching Old Navy shirts for 4th of <laughs> July. But, you know, we, we, that's not something that you want to put up on your wall as a heirloom portrait. Got right. You. Right. Oh, that makes sense for sure. Now, um, in terms of, you know, photographs and how important photographs are, one of the things that we wanted to point out as we segue into real estate a little bit is um, just how critical photographs are for our sellers. Because... Um, you know, where it used to be, we would just, as realtors, take photos. Yes. Well, now we do hire a professional photographer. Yes. We, we have one that we absolutely adore, and he does such a phenomenal job. But the house is really pop right out. And I think that that is so important. And when you're looking at listings, you can tell when someone has a real care for their home mm -hmm. by the photos and the listing that the person is provided. And I definitely think that if you don't like the photos, you manically just kind of scroll past and you don't really give that house a second look. Right. It uh, makes such a huge difference. It makes such a huge difference because you get the perspective of what it would be like to live there as opposed to just somebody standing in the kitchen snapping a photo, right? Right. 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 Like right. the different angles that you guys have your photographers use. and Well, yeah. and I realized after we started use, using a professional – just how important that was, because no matter how good I think that I do photos, um, I don't have the equipment and I don't have the eye and for what they're able to do. Is yes, so important. Yes. Lighting is so important, and people really forget that your eye is drawn to where the light goes, right? And that's why it's so important that you use a professional photographer when you do your listings, because then they're lit properly, right? And right. we even ask with some of our clients of okay. You know, the house can be a little bit dark. You know, at what point do you get a little more right. light in? And so we schedule the photo shoots for the, those times. So important. So important. Especially if the house, like, for example, our, the house that we moved from had a great southern exposure, right? Mm -hmm. And so that was something that we wanted to make sure that we showcased in our pictures because it had so much light from, like, you know, maybe 11 o'clock in the morning on throughout the main living area of the home. And I think that's important for people to know. Right. Natural light is one of the reasons people do end up moving, by the way. 
It's um, I can you know, see that. Our house is actually flipped around from the way it was. Our previous house faced a different direction, literally opposite. Mm-hmm. So I can totally appreciate that. Right, because we were working with someone a few months ago where they would go into houses, and that was one of the first things they looked at. They're like, we're moving from a dark house. Yes. Yeah. And, and they did not want that again. Yes. So you that's know, very important. Because just like you said, where people realize what their good side is for taking a picture, uh-huh. they know their houses. They know, sure. hey, this is when I can actually see in this room. This right, is and if they don't want to hang out in that room, why would they want to buy the house, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yep. But even as we had professional photographs taken, um, huge uptick on um, number of showings. Oh, and I'm we do sure. Find it's, it's and probably major. shares for the listings too from people like they might see the listing and say wow I saw this listing and it it looks like a house you might be interested in pops yeah we've had some people say something of like oh my gosh you're a photographer how many times have we had a seller say I can't even recognize my house exactly we send them the photos and they're like why am I why am I moving yeah right there was one that we did get some hate mail from other agents of you know the, the photos, the were, photos too good. were too good. <laughs> I can see that. Yep. I can see that. I mean, I de- you, there's definitely a difference, and I think that speaks to your level of professionalism mm-hmm. because you definitely can tell a difference between those that invest in their business and those that don't. Right. And it's just like anything else. I think also um, with headshots as well. I mean, you guys yeah. have great headshots, and when people see your cards or see your website, they see both of you just how we see you today and it's not a surprise of what you look like you know right, I think exactly. a lot of people get surprised because the picture on the sign is maybe from 10 years ago and, and <laughs> that is such a good point that you brought up how often should salespeople, either in real estate or other areas be thinking about updating their headshots because I know personally of some real estate agents whose headshot is 25 years <laughs> Oh, old. yeah. Yeah, they don't look anything <laughs> Well, like I know for photo. certain some people like that because I remember when we contacted people to look at homes, they didn't look anything like their picture when we met them in person. So I think really it depends on the line of business you're in. It also has changed a lot. You know, we talked about how styles have changed and headshots have changed as well because I think people are really looking to see – um, some maybe some personality or a little bit of um, approachability in the photos, mm-hmm. and so I think we've gotten away from the stiff, formal, formal headshots. You know, I mean, there's a time and place for those for sure. Like if you're if you're getting an award and you want to be, you know, um, show your accolades, then by all means, you know, use the formal headshot. But there's also times where you want something that's a little bit more down to earth you know, where you're more approachable. But for sure, please don't use a headshot that's 10 years old. Right. <laughs> I mean, especially, um, it's not just the face, but hairstyle or facial hair. You know, that was a big surprise for me one time because the realtor did not have facial hair in their photo on the website or the listing. But then when we met them, they did. And it's a big difference in a, a man's appearance of right. facial hair, no facial hair. Right. So makes a difference. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So I one question I wanted to make sure that we we got to though because I'd love to ask every single guest what is your favorite part about Livingston County? You live in Livingston County. You work in Livingston yep. County. What's what's your favorite? Oh gosh, I well when we first moved here it was because of the ease of access to everything. Right. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons we love living here is because we are so close to Michigan State. Because we're state fans, alum, you know, bleed mm-hmm. green. Go I know, green. go green, go white, right? Um, so we love being so close to Michigan State. We love Livingston County because it's pretty centrally located. Um, my parents are up in Genesee County. I have family in Oakland County. My husband has family in Wayne County. So it's nice because we're able to get to everywhere very quickly. But there's just so many offerings. I mean, we've got the nice downtown in Brighton and Howell each a little bit different with their own flavor, the other towns as well. But you also have retailers that, you know, like Costco, where we don't have to drive an hour to go to Costco. I think that's a a huge factor, especially for us and our big family. So, (laughs) all that cool. And I love that everyone has a totally different answer, by the way. I'm sure they do, right? things about the county, yeah. Yeah. So, very cool. Right. So, I I guess just to kind of wrap it up a little bit here, um, how do people 
contact you. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that one last thing that you want people to know about your business? Mm -hmm. um, well, I think people should know that I got into my business because I wanted to service people. Um, I started my business to be able to volunteer for an organization. And the only way I could do that is if I ran a business, like I was a registered business. Um, over the years, of course, it's become uh, something more than just volunteer. But I love to capture these milestone moments for people and have this visual history for people. And I want them to print their pictures, whether that's through me or if it's through a lab that I recommend to them. Um, people can reach out to me through my website. I've got a contact form on there. They can email me. It's uh, hello at christinamariaphoto.com. Or they can call me on my business line. It's 810-923-4144. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank this you for really having me. Talking to you about all this. It's I been fun. I feel like there are questions that we missed, but maybe we'll have to have you back sometime yeah, or something. Yeah, there's we'll so see. much to talk about. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you, everybody, for uh, listening today. Remember to uh, like and subscribe to our podcast. You can find us on Facebook, on Spotify. Apple, any place that you are looking for podcasts, uh, just Google Welcome to Livingston Podcast. New episodes and every Thursday. Every Thursday, yeah. And also, if you are looking to buy or sell a home or just curious about real estate, please reach out to us. We are powered by the Putkala Group, uh, and we would love to help you out in that fashion as well. So thank you so much for listening today, and uh, welcome to Livingston.